So what I am saying this morning is that these dark forces, these dark forces are alive and well in all of us. The devil is a projection of all we don't wish to own that is part of ourselves, part of being human. It is not a problem for us to be angry, to be fearful, to have feelings of hate or revenge, but it is a problem to keep that part of our humanity in the shadow, to be ashamed of it, to refuse to bring it out into the light. That's when we get in trouble because, as I said a couple of Sundays ago, the subconscious always wins. We human beings do have a choice. No, the devil didn't make us do it. The devil doesn't make us do any given act. But if we are not aware, if we do not do the psychic work to make ourselves aware, then we will allow those dark forces to have their way. So, are we fallen, as traditional Christianity teaches? Actually, yes, I think we are if we consider that no one of us is clear and clean and perfect all over the face of the earth. No, not one. We all fall short of the glory of God, as my grandmother used to say. And yet the fall has been referred to by some theologians as the fortunate fall, the fortunate fall, for it is a fall into consciousness. The story of Adam and Eve and the apple and the snake is a story about choice. And in that ability to choose lies all our splendor as human creatures. We can reflect, we can decide, we can choose. We have become as gods and therefore have been thrown out of the Garden of Eden, the Garden of Innocence. And with that evolutionary change in status from animal to human, comes moral responsibility. St. Paul famously said in Romans chapter 7, For the good I would, I, I do not, but the evil which I would not, that I do. The scripture may or may not be familiar to you, but surely the sentiment is, have you ever been unkind or mean-spirited, and then looked at yourself, looked at the person who behaved that way, and asked yourself, who was that? We all think we are the CEOs of our personhood, and then we discover that all these autonomous personalities are there, and they can just leap out at any given moment. That's not me, we say to ourselves. Well, actually it is. Actually it is. We need to acknowledge all that we are, and we need to invite continuous dialogue among all the parts, or the less than conscious impulses will drive our behavior. I've noticed that when I'm feeling most judgmental of others, that's when I'm feeling most insecure. Now let's take something like misconduct among clergy. It was easy for me recently to become condemning when one of our downtown ministers was found to be stealing from his church. Now, he's gone. He's facing a jail sentence. Rather than judging him, though, it would have served me better to reflect on the times in my own life when, as a clergy person, I have felt needy, times when I have felt empty and have tried to fill that emptiness in inappropriate ways. We all skate on the thinnest of ice, the thinnest of moral ice, as we cope with the yearnings of our souls. Now I want to speak of the dangers of ideology. Because not knowing, because uncertainty, makes us as human beings feel so vulnerable, we are all susceptible to glomming on to ideas or concepts as if they held a concrete reality which they do not. We think we will be saved, will be made secure by some movement or other. Any ideology, whether it's capitalism or Christianity or Marxism or whatever, any system of ideas is humanly formed and arbitrary and should be subjected to doubt and questioning. In fact, most evil is done in the name of some greater good. What the Nazis did, they could not have done so efficiently. 
had they not thought they were serving some higher order. The problem with any fundamentalist stance is that it puts goodness in a box and wraps it up. The way can no longer be questioned. Some people are in, others are out. We are good, they are bad. When we begin to think of ourselves as virtuous, this may be the first sign that we are about to fall from grace. It goes something like this. I'm doing great, wasn't I? <laughs> it's about that fast. 